Hello everyone and welcome back to part 3 of how I paint my fair skin tone babies and I am starting right where I left off in part 2 which there is a link on the upper right hand corner and in part 2 I finish with the neutralizing sealer and now I decided that my baby needed a little bit more neutralizing color so I went ahead and I did a 6 layer of my neutralizing color and this is what the entire kit looks like after that sixth layer of neutralizing color. So again, we have five neutralizing colors, then we have the varnish color layer, and then we have another neutralizing color. Now it is time for creasing, and for creasing, I like to mix my own favorite colors. So go ahead and use the creasing color that you love to use, and for this part, I have already posted a video on how I do creasing, so if you guys like to know a little bit more details, go ahead and click on the upper right hand corner. But all I like to do is, with a very thin brush, I apply my paint and I apply very little of it. And then with my blending brush, which is an e.l.f. brush that I purchased off of Target, it is only $1, I like to spread that paint across and shade in the rest of the crease so this is how I get that very like natural shaded crease and not painted on but it looks more like airbrushed on so that is the trick so you might be wondering if you should shade all of the creases that are on your reborn dolls um, you'll notice if the more with the more dolls you have painted you will notice that some dolls have a lot of creases and some dolls don't have as much creases I think when it comes to art it is really what the artist prefers to do or what the customer wants for their baby if they like creases and they like them to be accentuated then I would say go ahead and crease all the creases but if you don't like as much creasing shading, then go ahead and just crease your favorite creasing lines or your most important creasing lines. It really is up to you. If you want to know what I crease, um, I do like creasing. I do think that creasing gives the doll a lot of realism. But if the doll has a lot of creasing, I will not crease all the creases. I only crease like where the arm bends. And I also like to crease, crease. <laughs> I also like to crease the wrist area, inside of the hands, um, under the fingers, um, also under the arms. So those are some of the important parts for me. Um, if there are extra creases, then I won't crease them. I think it gives it like a natural look where the skin naturally folds without it looking too much like a crease, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, so that is how I do it. Um, now for the face, I do like to crease mostly all of the creases. If there are creases on the forehead, I do not crease those just because I've with my experience I've noticed that when I crease the creases oh my gosh it looks awful <laughs> so if I haven't baked it I will go ahead and remove it but but now I know not to crease <laughs> not to crease the forehead so I also like to crease around the nose under the nose um, pretty much when it comes to the face I crease all of the creases So the baby is all creased up and um, before anything else I do bake this part of the process just to make sure that the creases don't accidentally get removed by another painting process. So after the baby has cooled I go ahead and I do veining. Um, I like to mix my veining color with thinning medium just because I love the way that it applies. I used to do my veining color with thinner 
and um, just recently actually I decided to try mixing my color with thinning medium and I absolutely love the effect I think it looks very um, blended very realistic and it's just my favorite so um, go ahead and do the veining the way you like to do it. If you haven't tried thinning medium, I definitely suggest it. It is a little bit tricky when it comes to blending it. Um, just because if you are too rough, you will remove the entire thinning medium. And with the thinning medium goes the color too. So <clears throat> you want to be a little bit careful when it comes to blending. And ta-da! My baby is veined. I do have to vein the torso. But other than that, um, you do have to bake your kit right away because the thinning medium tends to do something funny over time. So whenever you have thinning medium on your kit, you want to make sure you bake within the first 20 minutes. Don't allow more time to go because you'll see it will look funny <laughs> and you will have to try to remove that and it's just a lot of work and it's a pain. So go ahead and bake within the first 20 minutes. But anyway guys, I'm going to finish off the veining. I'm going to be baking and then you guys will see the next part in my following video. So stay tuned. Please subscribe. Please feel free to comment. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Um, I really hope you guys are enjoying these videos and I really hope I am offering a different kind of perspective when it comes to painting. I know that a lot of people tend to paint the same way, um, but I do, but regardless of that, I still do love to share my techniques and hope to um, offer something new and definitely inspire people to enter the world of reborning. So anyway, guys, I will see you in my next video and thank you so much for watching. Bye.